Hi, uh, my name is Jean-Baptiste Kempf. I'm the president of the Videolan non-profit organization and the lead geek on VLC. Hi, my name is Ronald. I'm an FFmpeg developer and I run a company called Two Orioles that does um, video coding solutions for VP9 and AV1. And uh, today we are going to talk about David. Uh, David is a new uh, AV1 decoder. Yes, that's a recursive acronym. Um, so for the people who have been um, who's lost and shouldn't be at DMUX, AV1 is a new video codec done by the audience for Open Media, uh, which half of you uh, are part of. Um, so the idea is to do a new uh, license uh, free codec that could compete with HEVC and even get better uh, with 20 to 30 percent lower um, quality, uh, you know, bandwidth for the same quality. Um, so it's, it's work been done like was VP9 was done, but a bit better, right? There is an actual specification, there is an actual MP4, MKV mapping, there is a, t a decoder model, there will be a TS mapping for the people around you who still do broadcasting, um, and there was integration on uh, day one on all the open source tools. But um, we need, in order to get AV1 popular, we need to have a good decoder, right? Because the hardware decoders for AV1 are going to take between one year and two years, and when it's mainstream, it's going to take three years. So in the, in the meantime, we will need to have a fast uh, software decoder, and that's why we did David. Um, why do we do David? Is because the AOM and reference decoder is not fast enough. There is good reason for that, because it's a research project, not a production-ready uh, decoder. And with the FFmpeg and the Videoline teams, we know how to do fast decoders. We did that with FFVP9 that, in the end, was 20 to 30 percent faster than LibVPX. So the goal is to have a, a smaller binary, um, because then less security issue, faster, um, less memory footprints, the people who use AOM deck know about that, and cross-platform, and I mean actual cross-platform. VLC still run on OS2 uh, for the three people who care about, and yes, we care about having David on OS2. Or, and that stuff uh, that we know how to do, so um, we started a project that is called David, which is a new decoder, and that is funded by the uh, AOM uh, Alliance. So the fine prints, um, it is BSD license. That's very unusual for the FFmpeg or the VLC uh, guys. Uh, the reason is that we want you to use our decoder. We want you to use and, and fork it and use it as you want. If you want to use it in your driver, have a hybrid decoder, uh, use it and ship it in your app, whatever it's open source or not, please use it. So it's almost as, um, as a BSD, as public domain that we can do for now. Um, it's out, done outside of FMPEG for that reason, so that people can use it as BSD. The fine print uh, about technical design is that it's written in C and lots of assembly, sorry, no C++, no Rust, uh, sorry for the guys who are on Twitter. Um, <laughs> we write assembly by hand, no intrinsics, exactly like it's been done on X264 and FFmpeg to, be, to get the fastest uh, possible uh, decoding. Okay, so those are promises, those are goals. So um, we now want to talk about results, right? How does this decoder actually work? So the first goals were about footprints. So how much memory does it use? Okay, so these are the results, right? This is very simple. First, let's look at the source code size, and then we're going to compare that to libAOM. So the source code is about like a, a fifth, a sixth of the size, right? That's important because that means if you start working with the source code and you want to make modifications to it, fix bugs, whatever, it's going to be easier. Now, how big is the binary? It's about a quarter of what libAOM is. Um, again, that's important because if you ship an app, you want that app to be small, but, right? Regardless of whether it's, source, whether it's on a cell phone or, or whatever it is. And lastly, memory footprint, it's slightly under half. Again, that's important because there are many constrained devices, like cell phones, where memory usage is an actual issue. You want to use that memory to provide a good user experience, not because the video encoder eats half of it. OK, then the more important thing for us is speed, right? So I, I come from FFmpeg, and we write the coders to be fast. We want it to be as fast as possible just because we can, right? Why not? So um, these are slides from about three weeks ago. That's when we open sourced this product. And uh, at that point, the speed was, uh, we only had a C version. And the speed, single threaded, was about like 16 frames a second. If you compare that with libAOM, the C only version was about like uh, 10 frames a second. Right? That, that, that may not sound great, but um, as you add vectorized instructions like AVX2 for x86, 
it will get much faster. Also, as you add multi-threading, that will get much faster. So um, let's look at both of those together, right? So uh, first, let's look at the multi-threading. Um, if you add for whichever one of the encoder, uh, whichever one of the decoders, multi-threading, you see that the speed increases as it should, right? So um, even a C implementation of David already will give you um, with with a, a system load of, of about 2.2 close to 40 frames a second. Um, that's, uh, th th that is faster than what the 1.0 release of libaom gave you, even with SIMD instructions, so that's really great. C is faster than SIMD, that will never happen again. Um, but we did something else that's more interesting. We decided to add multiple threading models. So what libaom gives you if you enable multi-threading is tile multi-threading. Tile multi-threading very simply means I cut the image up in half, and I decode each half separately, right? And now I use two cores instead of one. I can also do that four or, or more. And in FFmpeg, what we've always done historically is, is that we used frame multi-threading. Frame multi-threading, very simply, is I have one frame, I have the next frame, let's decode both of them together. And now my both, both my CPU cores are busy. You can both, you can all probably understand that you can combine these two. So you can combine, combine tile and frame together. If you look at the green line on these slides, you will see that if you combine those two together, it scales much better, and you get an average CPU load that is close to 4.0. This was measured on my laptop. My laptop has four cores, so 4.0 is the maximum CPU load that I will ever be able to get, because I have no more cores. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go on. So that was three weeks ago. Since three weeks ago, we have finally started writing assembly for this decoder. So this is the current Git master of libaom, and this is the current Git master of David. Uh, libaom at this point probably has about 100% assembly coverage. We have about 60%, and uh, with that, I'll focus mostly on a single threaded here. You get about like 42 frames a second for us versus about like 55 on, on libaom. So we're slightly slower, about like 20%, 25%, but most of this runtime is still in that 40% of code that is not yet vector optimized. So how, much, how fast will this actually get, right? That's what you mostly care about. Um, it will be about 80, 90 frames a second, so about 30% faster than libaom. Right. What does that mean, right? How fast is that compared to other decoders that's, uh, or other codecs? That's the last slide here. So um, if, if you look at uh, the, the C performance on the left of AV1 versus um, VP9, VPX, or HEVC, things like that, like the FFmpeg native decoders for each of these formats, you will see that it's actually significantly slower, right? So 264C alone gives you close to 50 frames a second. And for David, you only get like 16, as we showed in the beginning. The interesting thing here, though, is that this is all because they added extra tools, like extra post filters, and all of these are vectorizable, right? Whereas for 264, most of the decoding time is spent in coefficient decoding, which is not vectorizable. So what you will see in the SIMD is that all of that will go away. I, pro I projected earlier that you will get about 80 frames a second for AV1 with David when it's fully SIMD'd. You can see that that's basically what you got for all of the other codecs as well. So how much slower will AV1 be than all the other codecs? The answer is not. It will be exactly the same speed. So um, where are we now? Um, so we did a release uh, um, at VDD uh, three weeks ago. You should have been there. You weren't. That's too bad. Um, the official work uh, was open source at that time. It's work done by some FFmpeg developers, some tutorials developer, and some VideoLand developers. Um, since then, it's been like that was a C version. There was a few bugs. A lot of work has been done. We have around 240 commits, already 20 contributors. Um, Lots of merge requests. It already works on iOS, Android, and, and desktop. We already have an mscript and backend. Um, I've not tested OS2, but I promise I will do that before tomorrow. Um, it works fine already on ARM, ARMv7, ARMv8, x86, x64. We prepared all the fuzzing. Uh, so we're starting by Google and Mozilla, who have started fuzzing the, the, the library. So it's going very fast. Um, we compared to the, we already have like 
twice much the speed that we have. So when is it going to be ready? Uh, I guess November, right? So November, we should have like a first version that should be more or less usable. Um, we are bit exact on most of the samples compared to LibEOM, uh, and it should, if there is stuff that we don't have, you should complain. Um, what are the next steps? Um, we don't have film grain. Uh, sorry for the people who care about that. Uh, there is a branch with film grain. It was going to be merged before we do a, a first release. We need to do uh, 12 bits per component also, but so far no one seems to care. Um, so if ever you care about 12 bits, please tell us uh, that you need and why do you need that, and we will work on that. Uh, of course, more fuzzing and more SCIMD and all, all the platforms. Then integration, right? Um, so we need you uh, to help us. Uh, we don't need you to actually code on David. We're doing that. Although if you want to do some assembly, please come. Um, but we need you to try it before it's out and to tell us, well, the API doesn't work for you and why does it not work for you? And if you work in a, a web browser, a, an application like Netflix or Hulu, or if you have any need on AV1 decoder, um, please come to us and please tell us what is not working for you. If you need a hybrid decoder um, and the current architecture of David does not fit your need, please tell us because we want to fix that. Um, because we believe that there is no reasons to compete on decoders, right? You should compete and put all your resources in having the best AV1 encoder. So when VVC is out, AV1 is already better or still better, right? Um, so please contribute uh, and give us feedback. And if you have a lot of money that you found somewhere, please send it our way so we can have <laughs> <laughs> More people working on SIMD. Um, and thank you. Please use David. <laughs>